Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for a tour of my sewing room. That's right, you've asked and I feel happy to oblige, although the room isn't in its cleanest state right now. Uh, I've sort of straightened up, but I haven't deep cleaned this room. Uh, I vacuumed a little, which, you know, helps, but it's not, you know, perfectly pristine in here because that's reality. It's not normally perfectly organized or perfectly pristine in here. I have stacks of fabric waiting to be ironed or pre-washed. I have projects in progress. It's, you know, there's bits of thread and fluff everywhere. That's just kind of how this room is, and I decided to be a little bit more transparent and, you know, straighten up a little so I wasn't embarrassing myself, but kind of show you a little bit more uh, the reality of what this space usually looks like. But I do receive quite a few questions about this room and about the things behind me, perhaps, or whether I dust, no, um, and how I store my stash, how much fabric I have, all that kind of stuff. And as there is a lot to talk about behind me, we better go ahead and start over here. So off the bat, first things to note while we're here in the corner, this, uh, like, basic information, I uh, still live with my family, so this is in my family's basement, like so many YouTubers and millennials before me. I still live with my family while I'm saving up for a house, um, but this room is in my family's basement, hence the light blue color. Probably not something I would choose myself. The white cabinetry, probably not something I would choose myself. None of the finishes in here are things I would necessarily choose on my own. Of course, I like things dark and cluttered, as we can tell. Um, so in my, you know, next sewing space, if, if and when I am able to find a house, I would like to have something more like the apothecary from, I think it's like the second season of uh, Outlander, this place. I've never actually watched this show. I know that's kind of sacrilegious. I think I've watched the first half of the first season and then I never finished it. So I need to, you know, next time I have the flu, I'll watch the rest of that. But I have seen this room floating around over on Pinterest and I kind of want dark jewel tone apothecary vibes in my next studio space. It is nice to have it light and bright. I know some people prefer all things light and bright. I happen to be a dark and moody kind of person and a cluttered maximalist kind of person, as we can tell. But this is the corner that I look at most of the time because I'm sitting here on my computer. I do only have one monitor. That's another thing I want to kind of upgrade in the future is to have two monitors for when I'm doing video editing, it might be useful. I've actually never tried it that way, but I think it might be nice. And this is all the, you know, clutter and fun stuff that I like to look at. So I can highlight some of that with you. I have fossils, I have moths, I have fake moths, real moths real uh, antique prints, fake antique prints, uh, all kinds of stuff around here, bottles of sequins. Uh, to me, an apothecary and a sewing studio are similar in that we uh, have ingredients that we use alchemy to kind of create stuff out of in some ways. But yes, this side of the room has this very uh, intense, overwhelming gallery wall situation going on. I do have these 1880s fashion plates that I picked up on Etsy. These are antique colored prints. They're probably from the center of the magazine, usually the center of the Fashion plate magazines had the colorful ones, and I did grab a couple more of these colored fashion plates, again from the 1880s, the bustle era, while I was in London recently, so I grabbed these two other fashion plates from that same time period on Portobello Road. But I have this wall kind of jam-packed. You can see also my silver play button is hanging on this wall here, so thank you for that. And I do have two more larger Edwardian, uh, like, centerfold fashion plates from the 1890s, or I guess the uh, late Victorian, early Edwardian period here. I'm not exactly sure what year these are from. I don't think it says, weirdly enough, but I picked these up ages and ages ago. They've been with me since I was like 17, so I've had them a long, long time. But on the black vanity that you see in the background here, we have stacks of Montgomery Ward's catalogs. No one is surprised there. We have trinket boxes. We've got a couple of hand fans sitting here. Again, a couple of fossils, some glass bottles, candles, Halloween decorations. Uh, you know, that big bird skull that you see in the middle of the screen here. That is a fake bird skull that was part of the Halloween line at Michael's, I think, or Joanne's last year. The skull with the gold snake wrapped around it. Again, a Halloween decor piece. Uh, Halloween decor is year-round decor for me, so I'm always hunting the Halloween stuff when it comes out each year for things that I can stick into any spare space. As you can see, I love clutter. I'm quite a maximalist. And in this glass little globe here that again is from Michaels, I do have a ammonite fossil and a trilobite fossil. The trilobite I bought while on my road trip across America and the ammonite I recently purchased in London. I do have a ceramic cauldron full of different colored thread back here as well and an owl that I found at Home Goods that I thought was quite fun. In this large terrarium, again these glass bottle apothecary jar kind of terrarium things are from Michaels. I do have a blue morpho butterfly. This one is the first one I ever pinned so it wasn't great. I replaced it. It used to be in this shadow box here with its other friends. I recently pinned a new blue morpho to go in this box, which is pinned better, but the one that I pinned kind of poorly ended up inside that terrarium, so I think that's a good place for it to live from now on. 
But alas, this is my very cluttered desk where I sit all the darn time. I'm sitting here right now as I speak to you, recording this little bit here. Um, but I have a big stack of beading material. You can see that's kind of like to my left as I sit at this desk, along with all my clutter over here. I again have some more lanterns and glass jars. Um, like glass domes and jars. Again, the glass domes are actually easily found at Ikea these days. You can't find giant ones, but they do have some nice ones over at Ikea. And then lanterns and other glass jars are usually from Michael's. This is a framed Madagascar sunset moth. That's the uh, species of moth that you see here. It's actually not a butterfly. It is a moth. Um, the difference being quite subtle, seeing as they're both in Lepidoptera. We've got a vintage pin cushion, some vintage thread, another little skull Halloween candle holder, Vintage bottles that I've picked up over the years, including a uh, Singer sewing machine oil bottle that I have, and then a chloroform <laughs> bottle that I have. I don't know if that's a real chloroform bottle, but in case it is, I think that's quite fun. But there's lots of candles for depending on what scent I'm feeling that day. There's a, a canister of cashews in case I get peckish, candle holders, vases, fake plants, and of course McConnell, the owl TV lamp here with a color-changing LED bulb in him, is named McConnell because Christine McConnell has this exact TV lamp, and once I saw it over in her videos, I hunted one down on eBay because I simply had to have it. But yes, this is the computer area, the digital station. I have a Dell monitor here and a very fancy gaming keyboard that's very clicky. I quite like this keyboard. This actually was a hand-me-down for my brother. My brother is a gamer, and this keyboard was actually too loud for him back when he was streaming, so I inherited this keyboard, and it does have color-changing LEDs again. As you can see, I always like my color-changing LEDs. But this is my cluttered messy desk area. I've got memory cards everywhere. I have bobby pins. I've got filters for the front of the camera, q-tips for touching up my makeup, lipstick for touching up my makeup. I actually keep a little mirror here above the microphone to check and see if I have lipstick on my teeth before I record because that has happened to me far too many times. But yes, my microphone stand here is a piece of porcelain filled with hook and eyes so I can reach for hook and eyes whenever I need them and uh, it positions the microphone a a a quite well. Um, it's just not very professional. And often jewelry does accumulate here next to the microphone for some reason as well. Usually it's pieces I want to wear in videos coming up, uh, pieces that I'm excited about that I want to wear soon. So I had these giant dress clips here to remind myself to wear them. And I've made many changes to this room over the years, of course, from when it was first. Uh, this room was purpose built for me in some ways, because when we moved into this house, it was a new build uh, that was over 15 years ago now. And I was obviously like 13 years old when I moved in here. And I back then wanted to be a watercolorist, a watercolor painter is what I, my dream job was. And so this room was built to be like the craft and artsy room. It was built for like both me and my mom to use, but she ended up going back to school and not doing much crafting or sewing in her life anymore. But I, however, will experiment with any craft and of course do a lot of sewing. But that's why there is a utility sink in this room and why the floor is like a light color tile and why the room is kind of lighter colors. It's because I was intending on using this room originally for painting. So if paint spilled, the tile was good for that. It's absolutely freezing in winter. Didn't think about that one. There's no underfloor heating or anything in here. That would have been really useful. So things to think about in the future. But of course the sink has come in handy for tie-dye and for hand washing and things over the years. But I don't obviously paint very much anymore. At least the only thing I really paint is the faux finishing out on set. And for that I use our kitchen, like kitchenette bar sink down here in the basement, which is absolutely stained with paint and stuff right now because of me. So I need to clean that one as well. I know some people probably find this extremely overstimulating and like they couldn't create or relax in a space like this. But for me, this is uh, mandatory. I always, uh, every apartment I ever had in college, even uh, these pictures were always with me. And that, that's like the first thing I ever did when I moved into a new place was cover the walls because I love having stuff around me. And I do get a lot of questions about how are you going to dust all of that? And the answer is I don't dust. Uh, you know, I was planning on dusting for you today, but again, that's not realistic. So I don't really dust. I, I'm going for a haunted mansion sort of vibe. So the dust to me is part of the look. I, it doesn't really bother me, especially in a sewing room because little bits of fluff and like uh, fabric dust are everywhere all the time. So it's not, it's like a losing battle, you know, unless I dust it every day, just not. Not something I'm going to do. So please do excuse the dust as we poke around. And the audio inconsistencies in this video. Excuse those as well, because some of this is recorded with the good mic. Some of it is on camera mic. There keep We keep having planes go by. I don't know what's going on. This is the other corner of this room. We have sad dress forms from Joanne's that I don't recommend. She's old. I use it as a stand rather than to do any sort of fit anything on it. I have the curtains I made a couple of years ago. I have a bookcase. I have stacks of fabric sitting on top of my scanner. This is my big flatbed scanner that I used to scan the Montgomery Wards catalogs. Also, I grabbed this giant like decorative wall fan while I was in London recently. 
Super fun. Of course, I have no more wall space, so it's just sitting here until I do. On top of these, that's right, Alex drawers from Ikea. Who doesn't have these? Uh, all the makeup gurus have these for their makeup, but I have it for some embroidery supplies in the top here. I had this gorgeous antique trim that I was sent recently. Thank you so much. Gorgeous, gorgeous things in that box. Thank you. Um, camera equipment in here, cords. I used to have a little end table here, and then I decided I needed more storage space, so I've switched over to these drawers, and I haven't fully organized them yet and added things into them, so this is a new... The newest addition to this room is this set of Alex drawers. But this side of the room is sort of the ironing section and slightly the crafting section. I sit at my desk to do any crafting, but I have my stacks of beads and sequins over here. And of course, behind this ironing station is my stash. All right, here we are in front of the fabric storage zone. Uh, we have clutter in the corner, stack of books, pretty things. Uh, then we have the stack of sequins. I can go through a couple of these trays with you because it's quite fun. Um, but sequins and beads are a bit out of control. I tried to make a new section for them but we've already outgrown the section, which is a shame. Then I have the ironing board here that I do not like. You've heard me complain about it before. I have my flower making tools and stuff out because that's what I'm currently working on or have been working on the rest of this week. Then we have the, the baskets of upcoming projects and lining. So these are two baskets that I keep mostly what I'm about to work on next in. Um, and then this basket is all full of different lining fabrics. You see some of the linings that I picked up in London sticking out of the top of that, but that's all different linings and interfacings and stuff. And I can reach for those quite quickly. I have different pins here that I might want to reach for. This is a little fake arm that I made out of yarn to stick inside of sleeves to help press things. I keep one of my pattern drafting rulers over here. I can link to these rulers below. I also have a video all about sewing tools and which rulers and scissors and all that kind of stuff I like. So I can link that video in a card and in the description below because um, I have things like this ruler linked there. And these just kind of live here so I can reach for them when I'm doing stuff here on the ironing board. And on this side I have the iron pens, uh, pieces of boning, random things I might reach for, and then some more books and stuff just to kind of fill out that zone. But the real fabric storage is behind me because it's all in these cabinets, like so. So in this cabinet here, in exhibit A, so it's cottons on the top shelf, there's like a couple of rounds sticking up in there, um, but this is rayon crepe, twill, any sort of rayon dress fabric is all living in here. Um, that's basically what all this is. This is a rayon chalet. These are rayon crepes. Some of these fabrics are vintage. Most are modern fabrics or um, fabrics I picked up on Mood or Etsy. Um, a couple of them are vintage fabrics as in from the 1980s as opposed to like from the 1940s, but they will work for 40s-ish projects. So they live in here. Um, there's some cotton sateens in here. But yeah, mostly rayon and cotton in this middle section. In this side, we have obviously the sparkly stuff. Um, so we have stretchy fabrics, sparkles, and polyesters. So this is all like special special effects and polyester and knits, basically, is what's in here. So it's all the shiny stuff and stretchy stuff. In the final side, I don't know if you can see, you can, you can see, we have, uh, again, top two shells, cottons. Uh, there's a couple of linens up there, but cottons and linen up here. And then down here on the bottom, it's cotton fabrics. That is a good amount of yardage for a blouse. And then silk yardage is here. Um, I say yardage. It's like usually only one or two yards uh, attended for eventual blouse projects. So these are blousey silks, uh, rayons where I only have like a yard get in this stack. But this is mostly like anything destined to be a blouse ends up in this bottom shelf. And then these are cottons and linens above. But that's not all of the fabric storage because it's me. I now have the lower cabinets cleared out so that I can use them for fabric as well. So let me take you down there. Here we are on the floor. Always a flattering angle. Um, in this cabinet, in cabinet number one here, we have most of the fabric that I recently picked up in London right here. Also this really cool fabric that I picked up at Allen's. I can show you that one. Um, a couple of brocades and wools. It's mostly like larger pieces that I can't fit in the top drawers get thrown down here. Ooh, utility room, making a noise. Basement. Um, some wools back there that are from Colorado Fabrics slash Denver Fabrics for those of you who are Colorado locals and know of that shop that no longer exists. So that's how long those have been kicking around. Some fabrics that I've received as gifts also are in here. I also have a bucket or like tote of random buttons down there because what kind of sewing room is complete without a jar or random bucket or drawer full of buttons. Cabinet number two. We have again more fabric that I picked up in London. 
These are actually cotton sateens that are earmarked for me to make stuff for my mom, but I am terrible at sewing for other people. So it's still fabric. This is all supposed to be stuff that's destined for me to make her stuff. This sateen in particular, I'll show you this one. It's absolutely gorgeous. She bought that while we were at a fabric store for me to make a dress for her, and I still haven't because I'm, again, a terrible daughter. But this is more cotton yardage. So again, this is mostly uh, wool and brocade, and here it's mostly, well, there's velvet sitting here. That's because I'm gonna use it soon. Um, but mostly cotton twills and cotton blend fabrics in here that I have enough to make trousers or a dress out of, so they're kind of chilling in here. And then this last cabinet, which I don't think you can see inside, this isn't helping, um, has the rest of my um, buyout of this fabric that I love so much from Mood. So I have the rest of this yard just sitting in here and some other stuff from Verdigree that um, I still have fabric left over to make stuff for another future project that is in the same sort of colorways. A um, little bit more of this stuff coming in another lookbook later down the line. I also keep a bag of boning. I have a bag of shoulder pads and then also all the fusible interfacings are all in here as well. And that's just kind of where those have ended up living. And I thought I would show you a peek inside these drawers as well. They're not very well organized as you can see. Um, on the right here we have twill tape, Velcro, buckles, extra tailor's chalk, extra machine parts, things like that end up in this drawer. And then on the left, we have all the buttons, which is the fun part. Um, we have glass buttons in here. These are check glass buttons with an iridescent finish, just gorgeous. This little zone here is actually the specialty and like glass and antique buttons here in the front. These ones again were recently a gift that I received. Oh, so pretty. But I have vintage buttons in here, antique buttons in here, modern buttons in here, anything, any button I might need to reach for lives in here. A couple of buckles as well, but I do love poking through and going through all these buttons because uh, it's just like a little treasure chest, of course. It's like back when I was a little kid and I collected rocks. Same sort of vibe. The next drawer over has my zippers. So this is a kind of random twill tape and bias tape and snaps and things live in this little plastic case here. I do have my custom labels from Dutch Label Shop in here. But then the right-hand side has dress zippers organized slightly by color. And then the left-hand side has shorter zippers for skirts and trousers. And then the last drawer, this is actually mostly full of scrapbooking paper. You just can't see it because it's covered with stuff on top. I have metal dress zippers. I have all this uh, trim cord stuff that I'm going to be using for an upcoming project. And then my rolls of hug snug rayon seam binding. And then other vintage, uh, like packaged vintage uh, notions live in here as well. And actually while I'm here, I'll go ahead and stick this vintage purse frame in this drawer for now. So it stays safe until I go ahead and make a handbag out of that. I want to use some Revenant brocade to make a handbag here soon. Speaking of brocades, I thought I would highlight a couple of very special fabrics from the stash here. Since we can't go through everything, there's simply too much. But this is a black and magenta and blue, which combines to this delicious purple brocade here that I picked up at Allen's. Again, a specialty fabric shop here in Denver. I can link them below. If you're uh, local to the area, you definitely want to go check that out. It's one of the only... They're one of the only stores in Colorado or the surrounding area, honestly, that carries specialty and apparel fabrics. So you definitely want to go check them out. And this is another fabric from there. Of course, this has got a black satin ground with purple jacquarded leaves on it. And it's just delicious. I can't wait to make a suit out of this sometime or a dress. I haven't quite decided. It's always a suit with me. So sometimes I try and be daring and make a dress instead. But mostly it's jackets and pencil skirts these days because I just can't get enough of them. And then I thought I would show you this fabric. It's like a tropical jacquard or brocade. Um, the flowers on this are the only part of this that really sparkle. The rest of it is just shiny. But this uh, lighter gray blue background kind of throws me off just a little bit. I love the print of this and I love the idea of a tropical brocade, but I just can't decide exactly what to make out of this. Normally any fabric I have, even in my stash, I know vaguely what I'm gonna make out of it. I'm gonna make a 1950s cocktail dress. I'm gonna make a suit. I'll make a blouse. But this fabric, I really just don't know exactly what to make out of it. I'm not quite sure. So this is the only like questionable fabric in my stash that I love, but I don't exactly know what to do with. I did find this one on Mood, by the way. I think they still have a little bit left. And this fabric is a very recent addition. I picked this up on Etsy. It's uh, shipped to me directly from China, from a Chinese fabric seller on Etsy. It is an extremely lightweight, delicate, iridescent lace. <sighs> of course, with iridescent mylar threads just so pretty. We all know how I love iridescence and like beetle wing effect things. This is like sheer peacock feather effect iridescence. And I think it's gonna look so pretty either over another color, like you can see over olive green here. I think that looks quite pretty. And of course it really comes to life over black. So I'll show you that as well. I'm not sure if I'm going to make a sheer garment or use this just for layering. Um, I bought like four yards because I think it was pretty inexpensive. I will link this fabric below for you and the seller that I picked it up from because it is super fun and uh, arrived very safely from China quite quickly compared to, you know, what you would expect from coming overseas. 
But here is the other side of the room. It's, uh, you know, again, not perfectly pristinely clean over here. Uh, forgive me. I have a ton of pattern pieces pinned to the back bulletin board, for example. But also some artwork is up over here. I have another bookcase on each side of the room here. So two bookcases. Always looking for more storage in here because, of course, all my cabinetry is taken up with fabric. And at the end of the blue patterning table of doom here, I have this white cheap I IKEA table with my Singer 99K machine from 1955 that I used for most of my sewing. And then I have the uh, white sort of sad brother serger machine here. Uh, I probably will replace this when I move into a new sewing room with an industrial serger, but for now it's still doing the job. And of course thread and sewing machine needles, bobbins, all that stuff are stashed here next to the machines. In the back corner again is that utility sink. Don't look at the wall too closely however because it is spattered with bits of tie-dye. And this is where the magic happens. That's right, we're over here by the blue patterning table of doom. I actually don't stand at this side, I stand at the other side. So this is kind of the side of the room we don't see as often. The sink behind me is still kind of a mess from doing all that tie-dye stuff, so I'm not going to show you anything close up over there. But this is the, the uh, unused alleyway of this because I don't walk over here unless I drop something off the table. I do get quite a few questions about the blue patterning table of doom. It is just like a child's activity table or like a school activity table. It's not actually a sewing table in any way, shape, or form. I inherited this table. It's my parents. I just have been using it. Um, when I move, I don't know if I'll bring this. It's not very aesthetic. We will have a blue patterning table of doom, but I think like blue stained wood might be nice. So um, we'll have a blue patterning table of doom. It just won't be this blue patterning table of doom, I think, because this buddy, although it has served us very well here, um, I don't think it's going to fit the vibe of the next sewing room. This is more science class than apothecary, which is on the way, but not quite there. But yes, this is where the magic happens. This is where the majority of pattern drafting happens. This is also where I sit on um, the stool that's in here. It's where I sit to do writing. So when I'm doing fiction writing, I sit, again, I look at this side of the room as opposed to sitting on the side, um, but I sit here in the dark. I usually turn the lights off. I'll have like my little green lights on or something, but I sit here in the dark and write because I don't know. I want to like lose sense of <laughs> like my own self and what time of day it is, anything like that, because I'm in the world of the chapter I'm working on as opposed to whatever else is going on. So I kind of just like being in the focused sort of dark room sort of a space, which is probably creepy and weird, but everything about writing feels like hanging out with your imaginary friends anyway. So until you're published, it really is quite a strange hobby. Um, even when you are published, it's still a strange hobby, but it just seems legitimate because you have a job. But yes, this bookcase uh, that I look at while I'm drafting at the Blue Patterning Table Doom houses, that's right, more Montgomery Ward's catalogs on it, but also a lot of books, design books, uh, some cookbooks, funny enough, because I don't have a kitchen to put them in yet, and then also some fashion books, especially on the bottom shelf of this that you can't see. I have a lot of fashion books to anchor this buddy so it doesn't come toppling down. But in these boxes are my hat making supplies. The shelf actually below this has more boxes and that's where I keep my patterns. I do keep all of my patterns that I make that you see me make here on the channel. I fold those up, put them in a, a clear Ziploc, label them and I have them in boxes over here. Um, then I have my thread slightly organized by color hanging on racks here around the ductwork here in the basement uh, for this little column that kind of sticks out into the room. More framed butterflies, some framed postcards from my Great American Road Trip I took a little while ago and below that you can see the top of the Burnett 35 machine that I rarely ever use. And then I do have a faux antique record player that sits here in this sort of liminal space between this side of the room and the next. And you can see these straw sort of boxes have my patterns inside. They're sort of spilling out of there. But in general, I think I have really outgrown this room. I think you can kind of see that here. It's not exceptionally organized, and that's just because I am sort of out of space. So I'm really looking forward to having a bigger space, especially because this is where I spend 99% of my time anyhow. Oh, and because I've forgotten, this snake that hangs on the wall over here on the other side of the room is from Michael's. It was part of their Halloween collection. I don't know where you can get one. I'm very sorry. I snapped it up. You know, you always have to be on top of that Halloween decor hunting, so you can make sure to snap up the items you want. And this one was a Michael's find. I get a lot of questions about this buddy. So this, or that, this, is my space where I am most of the time, honestly, spend most of my waking hours in this room. I'm usually editing video or working on projects in this room, so it's either here or my bedroom. I, uh, I'm kind of like some sort of a ghoul or some sort of a phantom that just haunts a couple of spaces, you know, attached to stuff. Although every once in a while people do manage to pull me outside of the house, usually by tempting me with antiques or like gelato, and that, that seems to work best, but uh, I, I usually can be found haunting this space. 
And again, if you want to know more about the specific tools I use, different kinds of scissors or paper or different things like that, I do have the video all about my sewing supplies that I will have linked in the card and then in the description below as well. But thank you as always for watching this video and coming to hang out with me in my studio today. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.